All right, you're good to go. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to teach you how to make bread. And um, I've got I've got three sets of dough, or I will have three sets of doughs going, so I'm going to show you things out of order. But I had to do that in order to get it all kind of available within an hour or so. Anyhow, can, we should probably start in prayer. Abba Father, thank you so much that you brought these women together, that you brought us to the Rooted Cafe, that we can um, learn to worship you through our hands, learn to worship you through the things that we do. And Father, you haven't commanded us to bake bread, but you use the analogy of bread so often in scripture that we, um, that the, the very essence of having bread being made by our hands on a weekly basis for Shabbat is just, it's so tangible in how we are to live our lives in the things that we do. And so, Father, I just pray today that as the ladies um, watch me make bread and that they learn, Father, I pray that another day that we'll come back together and I can see other ladies making the bread with their hands. Father, thank you for this time and help me and help my breads to work out well. In Yeshua's precious name, amen. So I unfortunately have a lot of noise going on. Uh, there's a washing machine over there, which hopefully is all finished now, but my, but my oven is noisy too. So I hope you can hear me. Anyhow, I'll be back in a sec. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you these are my breads that are risen. And so we're aiming to make these. And I have the I have the recipe written out, but I don't know how to get it to you. I'll have to figure out how to get that to Sydney later and then Sydney will put it up on the website with yeah. it. But so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our yeast and our honey and our measuring cup and our warm water. And I'm gonna start the yeast dough bubbling. Oops, okay. So I take a cup of warm water. And some honey. The honey is about, it's about that much. It's a teaspoon, it's about that much. I'm not very good at exact measurements, but it's about that much. Mom never measures when she cooks. No, nope. either. you know, some people need a measurement because they've never done it before. But when you watch somebody else do it, it's, it's easier to see and do and but you can't write out well do about this much so i have the recipe written out and it has about the right measurements on it okay so there's my honey in there and then so these little packety things i think these are about a tablespoon each. So I have a two tablespoon. So I would use two of these packets to make my bread. And so I just take two tablespoons. Oops. I can't get my tablespoon out. Two tablespoons. And just give it a little mix. And now I'm going to put that aside for a minute while I show you something else. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to braid the dough so it looks like this. But for the moment, I'm going to glaze them. This is an egg with some water in it, just mixed up with a fork. I got to get a paintbrush. Okay, I have a little, little paintbrush. These are a dollar at the dollar store. Okay. 
And then you just paint the egg wash everywhere. And my oven is set to 400. You girls are gonna have to talk to me. I don't wanna like mess up your mojo. Okay. I'm trying right. not to covet your counter space. Oh my goodness, you should see my kitchen. Um, okay, what am I gonna put on here? I'm gonna put Zatar on here. So, so this is a movable island, this one. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm jealous. So it has to be movable because my kitchen's not actually wide enough for a real island. And, but I have, I have a little toast counter over there and my sink is here, my stove is there. So what's cooking in your kitchen? Anybody making dinner already? No. It's only 2.30 here. Yeah, it's 2.30 at my house too, but I have a chili on for dinner tonight. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is za'atar, which is a combination of um, sesame seed and thyme and sumac. This is from, this is from Israel. So I'm gonna put this in. Timer for about 25 minutes. Okay. So we don't really have much bubblies yet. My water wasn't very warm. Does it have to be warm for it to be bubbly? Um, it bubbles, it activates it better. It makes it's like uh feeds it better. It also helps melt your honey better. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pretend that that was bubbly because. <laughs> You all know what bubbly yeast looks like, don't you? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. For the future, it needs to be bubbly yeast. Okay. Okay. So then, I don't know if I'm going too fast or if I'm. I think you're doing good. Okay. That's just me. I, I tried to time everything out when I was making the other batches to see how fast everything would go, and I don't know. Anyhow, also, I'm gonna recording it too. We can always watch you later and pause you if we need to. <laughs> True. Well, it was Ali that wanted me to do this, and Ali can't be here today. So I think what we should do next time is we should have Ali make it, and I'll just be sitting here to mentor. And if she runs into the trouble, I can help her. I think that sounds that good. Works. We can just have your new series, Cooking with Sombra. <laughs> 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 Well, so Yay. you got dragged into something else. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, my husband, my husband works from home and he needs the Wi-Fi. And oh. uh, so he was on a meeting just before I was on a meeting. And then he has another meeting at three. So I am hoping that our Wi-Fi doesn't, it doesn't mess itself up. Okay. So that is three eggs and then a third of a cup of oil. And I'm hoping you gals have pretty good olive oil at home. Um, you could use canola oil, but it's not as nice. I think it's worth investing in a good olive oil to make challah bread. Because remember the point that we're doing all of this is to give Yehovah our best. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't afford olive oil all the time, just use this much for just your challah bread. I actually have an olive oil from Israel mm. that, uh, yeah. It's called Galilee Green and, and then salt. And so then I need one teaspoon of salt. So this recipe makes those two loaves? Yeah. Okay. I'm and so counting in I my head Weight Watcher points. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, Shabbat, I was you just get a free pass. I was just told today that if I wanted to get rid of my blood pressure, that I need to go gluten free. And I don't think I'm willing to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then, so now I have like all my liquids and everything in here. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of flour. So that's one cup of flour. It's a little bit more than a cup of flour. I'm going to go get another one.
See, Katie, I'm normal to some people. <laughs> You're supposed to measure and follow the directions. People do <sighs> that? You made an OCD child. <laughs> you know what? So here's one of the things, right? We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. And there are some things where Jehovah is very exact on, and there are other things where there's nuances too. And I think it's really important that we value both kinds of people, the measurers. Lori John's my best friend and she's a measurer. <laughs> and, but you know, the best thing about having Lori Don in my kitchen is I can make a mess and she just walks around quietly behind me and cleans everything up and it's wonderful. Okay, so. This is kind of very much like a batter. Okay. And so I'm gonna set this aside for now and then I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna leave this and then this is gonna make a sponge. We're just gonna let that rise. That'll take about 10 minutes to rise. And then- Now is that normal or is that because you weren't poofy to begin with? No, so after I poof, now I wanna make my sponge. Okay. Because it, it just helps make it lighter and fluffier. Um, I never did that part before, so that's good to know. Okay. Um, so then I have this little cuttery thingy here. We had a 30-quart Hobart, so I don't know how to do small. So that's why I want to learn small. You have a 30-quart what? Hobart. What is that? Mixer. Oh, okay. Okay. Restaurant. I got you. <laughs> we made Kathy, all of our own breads. Kathy, one day you're going to have to tell me about the paintings on your walls because I need to learn those. I need to see them and learn them. Well, okay. we had a, a neighbor who wanted to, we just knew we were going to live inside that restaurant and I wanted to feel like I was on the outside. They're gorgeous. They are oh, you live in a restaurant? Well, our house is attached, but we retired uh, three years ago this week. We retired so we could foster care full time. And okay. uh, because our house is attached, we made the diner into our kitchen and our living room. Okay. And made our living room into another bedroom so we could get an extra child. So you don't host us anybody for dinner every night anymore? No. Okay. okay, so one of the things when you're rolling out is it's very elasticy, and sometimes if you're rolling it out, it will want to squish back. And so you, then you just leave it long for a little bit and just let it relax, and then you can roll. Did you it do out three or four? These there's only two at the moment. There's this one oh. and there's this one. Okay. Because. So this is essentially, this is one loaf of bread and this is the other loaf of bread. Oh. Come on, mom, you're in kindergarten. You can, you can count to two. <laughs> well, I wasn't paying Kathy? attention. This is your Katie. Yes, yes this is oh, my okay, oldest okay. child. Okay, I gotcha. So you yeah, she Katie is my precision there. baker. If you need a dessert that is precise, she's your go-to girl. Me, not so much. <laughs> okay, but you kind of need that if you're trying to reproduce the same food every meal for your guests. If somebody came to your house and they had this last week and they want it again this week, you kind of want it the same, right? See, that's they my issue. They loved our diner. It was new every morning. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like my okay. husband wants something that I made last week and it doesn't ever turn out the same. So I need a little nope. Katie yep. in my life. <laughs> yep. Okay. So if you have a small counter, one of the things you can do is just bend it in half and just roll it this way. Or you could cut it in half and roll, like no, no, no. make your ropes into two. Why did you Actually, why don't I do that? So I'm going to teach you how to braid it with a four braid. 
everybody knows how to do a three braid. It's the same thing as, you know, doing your hair. Will you make hollow again for this Shabbat or will this be your hollow for Shabbat? Cause you'll have a lot of hollow. I'm going to have a lot of holla. Uh, <laughs> no, I won't be making more tomorrow. Okay. Um, but my husband's going to the city tomorrow. So I may have him hand out some of the bread because we'll never eat it, all of this. That We're not big bread eaters. Yeah. So I make two loaves of holla for every week and I throw out probably at least a half a loaf every week. Really? Yeah. Which is sad, but I, my family just doesn't eat it and I don't yeah. eat it. So my husband tries to make French toast to use it up. Okay, I'm gonna put those on the side for a minute. Reroll these. And that was only two cups of flour, correct? Well, I'm only halfway through the recipe oh, that's right. of the cooking part. This is this is the other part. Okay. Because I can't do it all. Yeah. Okay, so watch this really cool thing. So if you take your doughs what? and let them spin like that, and then you put them together like this. You could even give it an extra twist. Isn't that beautiful? My mind is blown right now. I wish my hair could braid that easy. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? I can undo it. Yeah, please. Okay. What? So this is one long rope of, of dough. You twist it around like that. So now you've got your U. You. you bring your U's together and they're gonna kind of unwind a little bit. So you twist it up a little bit more and you put one through here, one through here, and then it kind of doesn't look twisty enough. So then you just twist one in what that's awesome isn't that the coolest thing ever it is <laughs> where did you learn that did you teach yourself that i think i did wow that I'm one impressed. i think i did that was probably just a, oops i made a mistake okay so here's how the other people do it the people who just like to follow directions. This is my Danny. Okay, so I'm gonna put my two loaves, or my two strands, which remember this is this is one loaf. Yeah, that was the other loaf, right? Okay, so this, all I did with this was I just broke it in half. So I'm gonna take this and twist this over. I'm gonna take this and twist this over. And you kinda wanna make sure that you twist in the same way every time. So this one is going to be on that side and this one is going to be on my side. Wait, is this like the circle holla? I've never been able to do that. No, it's not. That's still it's awesome a, though. It's not a circle holla, but if you took, like if you took that whole dough and braided your whole dough this way, you could make yourself a circle. Yeah, you could. You could. You know? that, that, uh, I, I've watched too many complex, like, like four and six stranded braids, and then you get the pattern, but that looks so much easier and so much more beautiful. It looks like effortless. I know. And then, you know, you just kind of squish it up. So, you know, you can make it long and skinny or squish it up and make it nice and tidy like this. And then... So that's my two different loaves. And oh, nope. <laughs> it's the comedy show of Sombre, Sombre in the Kitchen. But they, they essentially look the same. And I think if you're going to make a set of halas, they should try and look similar to each other. So I wouldn't do two different styles if I was making hala. I would make just one style just because the aesthetics of it sitting on your table, you know? So then this is like a plastic parchment paper. You can use like regular parchment. And then I'm gonna put this aside and 
that'll be like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how warm your kitchen is to, to raise up so that it's like the other one that I put in. And um, sometimes you want to put like a wet cloth or this is just wet paper towel. You can put wet paper towels over them. Don't look, mom. Don't look. <laughs> Don't look. Why? Who did that? Did I do something wrong? Mom has a paper towel. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> Issue? Well, I do Why? have tea towels. Yes. We could never and would never skimp on our food. So the only way I could save money in my restaurant was to be very careful with my paper products. It was way before you had the restaurant. <laughs> I was a child. <laughs> you know what? I don't use paper towels very much at all um, because I too like to, like I have a drawer full of towels and cloths and stuff. My husband gets upset that, you know, oh, you know, don't use that. That's a, that's a drying towel. Don't wipe up the wet thing with that or don't wipe up the milk with that. It's like, honey, it's okay. I can just wash it. It's, it's not waste, but anyhow, it's just to keep it moist. See, Katie, she could dry it and then, you know, use it for something on the floor. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I work so I can have my bounty paper towels and use as many as I want. <laughs> well, this isn't fluffy yet. I need more uh -oh. time. Oh, well, so should we just chat? It's, I mean, yeah, go for it. I'm all about chatting. What should we chat about? We're recording, but whatever. It's good. Just... Kathy, who's behind you? Uh, I, Tiriana. Hi, I, Tiriana. Hey, girlfriend. Hi. Her electronics died, and so she's, you know, we're on semi-vacation, spring break started, so they're getting electronics before 4.30. <laughs> uh, yes, I know all about that. My kids are like, well, if you want us to be quiet, can we get on the computers now? That's funny. <laughs> I just feel so manipulated too often, just too often, but oh well. Mine's doing hybrid school, so she's on her two days home, so she's on her computer, but starting April 5th, they get to go back to um, full in person, so well, that'll that's be nice. interesting. But then we have to wake up at 5 a.m., no. catch the bus oh, at five, 5. You're a teacher, aren't you? Uh, special ed aid. Okay. Yeah, are y'all at the same school? Different? Of course not. Different you know. districts. <laughs> so her, her, my spring breaks this week. Her spring breaks next week. Oh no! Yeah. Are y'all in the same town? Um, she goes to school in a different town because our town, she just it was That's small of a school for her to enjoy. Yeah. Arkansas spring break is like all the same week pretty much mm -hmm. like everybody yeah, most all the other districts are but my district chooses to be different, different. It doesn't hold. but we get so out your may 14th so i don't so you're no. telling me if i'm slack schooling right now it's okay because it's just you know it's spring, spring break. break yeah spring sure. break for the last three weeks yeah, yeah that's it spring break for the last three weeks uh-huh look do you do do you school year round sure Okay, well, I was saying there's some schools that school year round and like every quarter they take like a three week break, but they they go to school year round. So I'm a homeschooler. My kids are constantly you know. learning. Doesn't yeah. really matter what they're doing. And so, sure, yes, I homeschool year round because when they work out in the garden with me, they're learning or when they're playing with the horses, they're learning or when they're snowboarding, they're learning. Um, <laughs> Gravity, they're learning all right. about gravity. <laughs> but I, I tend to work really hard from like mid-August to mid-November, and then I start to peter out. You know. And then I pick up steam around late January, and I go again for about another four or six weeks, and you know, and then you there's just too much to do. And I'm I'm ready to write my report at the end of the year right now and say, yep, we did school. We learned <laughs> and I'm finished. <laughs> yeah. 
I can't wait till we can do homeschool other than the way we're doing it now. Yeah. And, and so, yes, lazy homeschooler. Yeah, that would describe me. Um, but, you know, I have I have proof of my output. I have three sons who were homeschooled. My oldest in grade 10 apprenticed with our farrier. Um, and then, well, once he finished apprenticing with our farrier, I, I guess grade 11, um, then he had work to do because the farrier gave him some of his clients, but then he wasn't making enough money. So he went and got a job putting on a roof on an industrial building. And then he didn't like that. So then he went and worked with a farmer and then he got his 1A license and then he held gravel. And then he went to school to become a full-time farrier. What's a well, farrier? And then put, put shoes on horses. Oh, okay. And so he's a dad supporting a family of his, well, his wife is expecting baby number five right now. And they own the house. Off you go. Okay, go away. Okay, go away. Okay, go away. Your buddy. <laughs> um, is that Oreo? So anyway, Yum. Sorry? Oreos. Sorry, oh, yes, it, I'm being nosy. Yes. <laughs> Oreos. I'm not the one who eats them all. They were, they were um, the, and do you want the product of the week at the gross, at the counter yesterday? I went, Oreos, sure. I could take a product of the week, Oreos. Um, anyhow, so my oldest son is a full-time farrier. And so uh, my second son, did grade 12 at home and then he went and learned how to be a welder well he's not a welder but he's still self-employed not self-employed he's still employed and he has two kids and he owns his house and my third son was only here until grade 10 and then he went off and learned how to build barns and he now well his wife is expecting baby number two he doesn't own a house yet but he's only 25 so i think i did all right i think you did i I think they're just fine. You know, they're not President Trump. They're not going to they're not going to rule the world. And that's OK. Um, <laughs> but they're dads and they're providing for family. And that's the most important thing. And I have one daughter and I'm trying to train her to. Not let anybody. Um, devalue her. Yeah, that she's worth she's worth somebody working hard for. OK, so. It's a little bit puffy. I would usually let it sit a little bit longer than this, but it's puffy and I'm going to keep going. And he left the cookies for me. Okay, so I'm going to go get another cup of flour. Do you use all purpose flour, Sandra? Yes, or do you I use guess bread so. flour? Uh, no, this must be all purpose. It's a huge bag for my organic store. So it's not, yes, let's just go with, so I have a, I have a grinder and I often grind my wheat berries like straight from, and then you end up with 100% whole, whole wheat, but that makes a really heavy bread. And so the family doesn't like that. So sometimes I sift that wheat and get out some of the bran and that makes a, it's a much nuttier flavor and it's a yellow, yellow the, what do you call it? The, the crumb part is yellow. Janny wants to say hi. No, <laughs> you can't say anything to me right now. So I've put in one cup of flour and I'm gonna stir it around a bit. It's almost right. So how old is your daughter? My daughter is going to be 17 in three weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Ah, mine will be 16 in June. I'm a short and small 17 year old. She's not short. She's taller than I am. I'm five foot five and you're like five three. <laughs> My poor daughter, I think maybe is five three if she stretches really tall and poofs her hair. <laughs> <laughs> That is like here. Okay, so my alarm just went off for Minka prayer. 
and okay can you take this away please <laughs> okay ouch okay all of you ouch okay ouch ouch or as Macbeth says, out damn spot, out. Okay, where is, just go away please, please, please. There they are. Ooh, are they that didn't going? take very long. No, that was, I put it in, I think it was 25 minutes at 400 and they get this nice brown color with the little white in them. They're really pretty that way. That's hot. Okay. We, so we anyhow, have a convection oven, so it's hard learning to adjust to a regular oven. That, that's convect too. Oh. That does not happen. Oh, okay. It has, it has like a fan in it. Right. Okay. We had pizza ovens that were, that we used inside. So you could, our place was known for the aroma that was, we made bread every day. So when people walked in, they, their memory of Willow Creek Diner was of bread. Okay. Let me just, okay. So like I just said, my timer, my, alarm just went off my alarm just went off to tell me it's time for minka prayer so do you guys pray it at three o'clock every day okay so i'm going to teach you something else while i'm teaching you to make bread is that you know how yeshua died at three and it was the same hour that the lambs were being slaughtered yeah well so every day the priests had to do um, had to do sacrifices in at the morning time and in the afternoon, and so the morning time was usually it's called shekari, and we usually do that about nine in the morning, and then at noon at three there's something called minka prayer, and the so there's this thing called shmoni Ezra which means the 18 benedictions. Sometimes it's called Amida. And that, that prayer, the format of that prayer is like a longer version of the Our Father. And so it, there's 18 different prayers that you pray during that time of, in prayer. And you do it in the morning time and in the afternoon. And there's other, other kinds of prayers but the, basically the point is it's a protocol and so it's the appointed time of prayer or that word moed means our appointed times the times that we're supposed to come before the lord so sabbath is an appointed time and the feasts are an appointed time but prayer is also an appointed time and so i'm just going to pray the shema and the our father right now just because it's an appointed prayer, time of prayer shema israel Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad, Baruch Shem, Kevod Malchuto, Leolam Bayed. Hear, O Israel, Yehovah is our God, Yehovah is one and only. Blessed be his glorious sovereign name, whose kingdom is for all eternity. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I don't know if you can hear this yellow going on in my house. And so one of the things about when you live a diligent life, when you live that disciplined, diligent life, according to protocol, according to traditions, which, you know, traditions are hard because we always want to make sure that those traditions are in line with what the word of God says. 
But one of the things when you are disciplined to pray at those appointed times, it doesn't matter the chaos that's going on around you. Yesterday I prayed in, like I went to an indoor playground kind of place. It was like a climbing gym and those ropes up in the air and there was motor cars and, and golf and all that stuff. And I just sat and I prayed. And when you learn to pray in the midst of chaos, we're going to be able to pray when times get get hard. I have to go get another cup of flour because this is too sticky. So I've put in my my flour. It's sticky. And I'm getting it stuck all over my hands. So I need a little bit more flour. I was listening to something someone. Well, it was a group talk. I don't know where, who, what, wherever, but they were saying whenever they were talking about praying and like yesterday you were praying and, but it said pray or scream while looking like solemn dance while standing still and like shout with joy. I don't really remember exactly how it was, but like basically saying in the midst of chaos, in whatever circumstance, wherever you are, be composed and pray you know at whatever time and it's like wow that's it's a pretty prof I totally butchered that but I thought it was a profound thought no, statement. I, whatever <laughs> I understand what you're talking about it's like it's like it doesn't matter what's going on still walk the walk yeah it doesn't matter where you are in in life because there's always turmoil mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you do there's almost always turmoil and we just need to remember that we're always in the presence of the Lord, no matter what's going on around us. So one of the ways that I make, like do the kneading is I stick my thumb in and then, so I stick my thumb in here and then I fold over my thumb, stick my thumb in, fold over my thumb. So, and it's just, you don't have any oil on your hands or anything. It's just, you have no. enough flour where it's not sticking. Well, I don't want too much flour because I don't want to make my dough dry. Okay. I want, imagine you had little children that were going to come and play with this. If this was too stiff, they wouldn't be able to manipulate it at all. Okay. But if it's too sticky, it gets irritating. So you want enough flour so that it's dry-ish, but you don't want it to be too stiff so that a child couldn't play with it. Imagine okay. it as Play-Doh. Yeah, imagine it as Play-Doh. That actually was my kid's Play-Doh growing up. <laughs> 16 years with our restaurant, and they always got a piece of dough to play with, do creations. And then if they ate it, I didn't have to worry. <laughs> right. And it's not too salty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> my counter moves, so this is a little difficult. But I like the height that this counter is at versus those ones. My husband is tall, so my counters are a little higher than most houses. So I'm kind of turning it over like this. And you see how there's like a little break here? We don't really want that. We want it to be smooth and it will be smooth and shiny. This is. See how there's like little bumps on it? Mm -hmm. Those little bumps say it's not ready yet. So talk amongst That's yourselves. So interesting. Sorry, I'm just like, you're, it's like captivating watching you like, just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna move to this end of the table. Sydney and I are the YouTube generation, so we're used to just watching people do random <laughs> yeah. stuff on the internet. <laughs> well, and like, I'm one of those people, Charlie gets really, she has to keep me in line because I'm like squirrel, bird, parrot, like I go everywhere. So she's like, stay on track. And so for like something to like hold my attention, I'm just like, oh, well, okay. So Sombra, you're doing a great job. <laughs> 
Well, and that's the nice thing, right? Because I'm a squirrel too, but I'm making three loaves of, I'm making three sets of bread while I'm talking to you, yeah. which means this morning I had, well, yesterday I had to talk with Lori Dawn and go, okay, I have to do the teaching at 2.30. So that means I think I'm going to need to use another one that's, but I want one that I get a cup. So that's three breads I'm going to have to make, right? And these are the hours that I'm going to have to start it. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. see, that's why it's good to have a best friend who's logical. Yeah. Yeah, my husband is like, he pairs you up. So you have Lori Dawn. I don't know about your husband, but like mine is like super. Well, my husband is Lori Dawn, a male Lori Dawn. Yeah. Okay, I was saying my husband, my my husband, Aunt well, and now my best friend, they're both super like, go like follow the rules, OCD, follow the recipe. And I'm like, okay, well, yep, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> So that makes sense it, that Lori Dawn said that me and you were similar. <laughs> so can you see it's smoother? And when I try to stretch it out, it stretches nicely. Okay. This is a really soft one. Okay. So then I'm going to turn it into a ball. And then... Put a little bit of oil in the bottom of your bowl. Put the round side of your ball down. Turn it around a little bit and then flip it over. And so now my dough has oil on the top of it and it can sit there and rise. Okay. And then I'm done. <laughs> I'll taught you everything. How long does it rise? An hour-ish? Yeah. That, so that would sit there. Well, I guess it depends on how warm your house is, you know? Okay. Um, and it also depends on your altitude. Um, but yeah, an hour, hour and a half. And you can put like a wet cloth on top of that too to make it um, stay moist. But then... So... These ones have risen a little bit, but they're still not as big as this one. So I would still want those to rise more. These ones aren't ready to put in the oven yet. Can they rise but, too much? Yes, and what happens when they rise too much is, you know, like when you have a balloon and you blow up the balloon and you leave it like that, and then the air starts to seep out, it gets kind of like that wrinkly skin. If it rises too much, you'll start to see it get that wrinkly skin. You can still bake it, but- it just won't be pretty. You know, yeah, it won't be as pretty. Okay. Um, so yes, I have forgotten those before. I've gotten busy with things. And um, my first you know, five, six years of making dough, making bread, my husband ate a lot of bricks of hard, oh, no. awful bread because I didn't put enough yeast in and I put too much flour. And so, you know, it was like really hard, hard work to, uh, to make the dough. Well, now okay. I'm finished and I'm really sad because this was What's fun. Your, what elevation are you at, Sombra? And you can give it to me in meters. I can convert it. I don't know the answer to that. I'm, <laughs> oh. do you know where North Dakota and, and North Dakota, South Dakota is? Yeah. So I'm, I'm like just North of North Dakota. So it's not mountains, but it's not, um, it's not coastland at all. It's much higher elevation than the coast. How okay. do you spell show, show what, how, what are you, what are you, where are you at? S -S Saskatchewan. Yeah. How do you spell S A S K. A-T-C-H-A-W-A-N. And that's a mouthful. Because I'm at like uh, 4,300 feet. So I have to watch that. I'm at that point, that kind of middle point where the elevation starts to cause problems. So. Well, I was in Kingston before. Kingston, on, in Ontario and Montreal. And so, you know, you're right down at, at, um, ocean level or yeah. whatever you call it. So according to Google, 
you are the max elevation there is 3200 meters but like the average is 522 meters so i don't know how big that is that's about 1500 1800 because a meter is a little over three feet okay it's 39 inches so, so. yeah we have we have something called the cypress hills which is mm. like a little bump on the landscape <laughs> I'm in here. the foothills of the Rockies, so oh, we're not quite to the plains of Kansas, but yeah. Well, well, I'm kind of like where Elizabeth. No, I'm not with Elizabeth. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm really flat, like Nebraska, Kansas. I'm really flat. So that's good to know. Are you done bread talking? Because I'm going to stop the recording, and then we can still. I am okay. I am done bread talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs>